What is up, people? Van from Vaniverse Gaming Channel here with another episode of Should I Buy? Today's game we're talking about is Ash of God's Creation. This game is on Steam right now, but you can also buy it through Zola Partners, which I partnered with. If you buy it on Steam, there's going to be a link in the description. Do that if it's on sale. If it's not on sale, if you could buy it through the other link and I get a little bit of the proceeds to help my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So what is Ash of God's Redemption? Basically, Ash of God Redemption is very similar to Banner Saga. It's a turn-based tactical RPG with a very good story and very beautiful cinematics and very nice music. So it's not a Banner Saga clone. If you like Banner Saga, you will probably like this, but you might also hate it because it doesn't function a lot like Banner Saga. But the basic story behind this game is there are these gods that are basically killing off everyone and there is a group of these demigods who you see here and if they can sacrifice themselves then they will kill these other gods and the world will be saved from this terrible blight. However, in this fight one of the demigods actually doesn't die. They end up to push off the blight but at the same time, this one guy is still alive. So the story of Ash of God's creation is you see this other blight coming and you're going to have to try and figure out why, where it is, when is it coming. So very interesting game. The art style is, is amazing in my opinion. I like the music. I feel like the combat is where people have the biggest issue with this game, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So, with that being said, let's get into making a character, the whole thing. So when you first start the game out, you can pick between three different modes. You can pick story mode, you can pick classic mode, and you can pick Iron Man mode. So basically, obviously, if you've played many games, classic mode is the standard. Iron mode is if you want to have a tough time, and story mode is if you want everything is to be easy and you just want to listen to the story. So the combat in this game is very similar to the combat in Banner Sagas. There's a couple differences in this. You can equip items like you can in Banner Sagas, but this game has this card deck that you can utilize that's like a global ability. You can have five in your deck at one time, and basically, depending on what level you are, I'm sorry, what turn it is, is what card you can use. So every turn, you'll go turn one, turn two, turn three, turn four. And so a turn consists of everybody taking their turn. So every character on the board has to take their turn on your team for that turn to be over. So you can see right now, everyone's squares are light blue and light red. Soon as I use my ability, then basically what will happen is my square will turn dark blue and my turn is over. I can't use the character again until every character on my team goes once. So I have two right now. So if I use the first one and then I use the second one, so this is uh, the guy and his daughter. So if I attack with him, his turn is over. But I can't use him again until I attack with his daughter and her turn is over. And the same applies to the enemy. So you'll also notice that there are red and yellow bars. The red is the health, the yellow is stamina, and similar, I believe, Banner Saga operates this way. As soon as you take down their yellow stamina bar, they take twice as much damina, damage to health, but sometimes it's easier just to crank away their health than it is to crank away their stamina. Every class has its own abilities, etc. So, also similar to Banner Saga, you will build your, your group of followers. You have different classes that have different abilities. Um, you have archers, you have tank guys with shields and swords, you have, you know, two-handed wielders, you have dual wielders, you have rogues, you have guys with spears. So very similar where you build out your party. And obviously you want to stick with a group of your party that's your main group because they level up. And as they level up, their skills get better, etc. So that's pretty much how the combat works. Um, when you do finish someone off, you buff there's certain um, passive abilities that buff everybody's damage or buffs their armor or their stamina, etc. Um, but it's pretty simple. You can see the blue on here too. This is the movement. That's 
how far you can move without having to waste your stamina. If you move to the yellow, you end up wasting some of your stamina bar, which can be uh, detrimental. Your stamina bar is how you do a lot of your abilities. Once you run out of stamina, you can't really do a lot of your better abilities, so it's also good to maintain stamina as well as take away somebody else's stamina. So, pretty, pretty basic, but this is, I think, the part of the game that people have the most problem with is the actual combat. People do not like that your entire team has to, everyone has to take a turn once before anyone else can take a turn. Um, and people just think the combat is boring. Now, I can tell you when you first start the game and you don't know a lot about it, the combat's actually quite difficult. You'll lose a lot of these battles. But once you understand the mechanics and how it works, and you get a little bit higher level, then you start to realize how easy the combat becomes. And I think that's the reason why a lot of people have with this with this game. So that's the combat. So now let's get into, let's talk about a little bit about the story and how that works in this game. All right, so the story is broken into three different sets of characters. The first set is gonna be Thorin and his daughter, Gleda. Basically, they come home to find that Gleda's mother and Thorin's wife has been murdered and that the person who murdered her was taken over by something that made them kill her. And that is what's going on through the town. The bells are ringing, people are going mad, and people are killing and attacking other people. So they've decided that it's time for them to leave and they're going to pack up their things and they're going to head out of town. They were given something from a merchant who they think is a little bit on the shady side. He was able to get out of town, so they think he knows something, and they're going to be on their way to go figure out where he went and what's going on. On the way out, you guys come across a group of other guards that are in there in the town, and they decide to join your party and to travel with you along to the next area. Basically, how the travel works in this game is you are given these items called Strix. They prevent the plague or the reckoning or whatever you want to call it from hurting somebody. So basically, as you proceed, you go through these things. And that's what was given to Gleda and Thorin when they were in town. So this is the first party that you're going to do. And then you're going to fight them along the way. Now, the game is broken up into different chapters and kind of each character is involved in each chapter. So this is Thorin's chapter with Gleda and his group of characters. The second part of the story actually follows a guy named Lo Fang. Lo Fang is a shadow warrior from the Shadow Warrior clan. He's supposed to have no emotion. He was raised from a child to just be this, this killer. And basically he's at this gigantic area where there's a king and they're ready to start a war, and all of a sudden, he gets attacked by these creatures. And so he decides to, instead of doing what he's supposed to do based on his shadow clan upbringing, whatever you want to say, he decides to help a gal that is about ready to be hung. She has red hair, you can see her in the bottom right-hand corner. And so this story goes, he's basically heading to figure out what's happening and he's taking this group of, of slave gals with him that he frees on the journey. Now Lo Fang is probably one of the most fun characters to play. He's probably one of the most overpowered where Thorin and his daughter don't seem to be. Um, and you can see this fight starts off solo and with some of his abilities that he has, it's actually quite tough to do this fight solo. But once you figure out how it works, then you can do it quite well. Like, so how I'm going in between these guys and boom, boom, and kind of stabbing them. And some of the abilities that he has actually regens his health and regens his stamina. So it, it's very much so based on how you position and all that. And I think that's why people get upset with the combat towards, towards the end of the game is that you start to realize all I have to do is stay away from everyone until their turns are over. And then once their turn is over, then I can just attack them. See, like these two, they can't attack me because their turn's over. And I can keep on attacking because I'm by myself. So little things like that. But so Lo Fang, he's coming from the eastern area. He's got a group of people that he picks up. He's a kind of no BS kind of guy. He kills who he wants to kill as long as it benefits him. And he has no compassion for anybody else. But he intertwines with the story because of this girl Reek that he picks up from the, uh, from the slaves here that are about to be executed. 
So the third and final character you play in the story is a guy named Hopper. So Hopper is one of those ex-demigods who was in the beginning battle that prevented the last big blight coming, and he lived and everyone else died. But he's been pretending to be human ever since that battle, and he's turned into this scribe and scholar, and nobody really knows that he's this, this god and he can fight and do all the things he can do. But he starts to see... He goes to talk to an old friend, and she's a seer, and she tells him that she feels that the blight is coming again, and that it, the plague is going to be hitting everybody, and that you need to do something about it, kind of. So he's curious, and he wants to figure out what's going on. Now, because he's a demigod, he is one of the only ones that he feels can end up um, stopping this from happening, but he doesn't really know what's going on. Along his journey, he gets cursed and his one arm, and basically his curse continues to grow as the game progresses. Eventually, you're going to be losing stats the more that you take in the curse. However, if you try and fend off the curse, then it's going to increase the reaping, which makes everything that you're going to fight throughout the game more difficult to beat. So it's almost worth your time to bring in the curse and not fight it. Now Hopper levels extremely quickly and he's probably one of the easiest characters to play because he has a lot of abilities where he doesn't have to even get near anybody to finish them off. So that is the third and final character involved in this, in this group of story. So now let's kind of give you my opinion of what's great about it what's bad, why, and then we'll tell you if we feel you should buy this game at the price point or at a discounted price. Okay, so let's talk about the negatives of this game and the things that I don't like about the game, and then we'll end it with the things I do like, and then I'll give you my opinion of the game as a whole and whether you should buy it or not. So some of the cons about this game, there's not many. I feel like the game is pretty darn good for what you get. But the biggest and most annoying part of the whole game is there is zero voice acting when the characters are talking to each other within the game. So when you get to a scene and it has them both talking back and forth, all they do is grunt and make these weird noises and then it's just silence. So you're reading the whole thing and choosing what you want. If they would have put voice acting in this game, it would have been huge. I feel like the game would have done better when it first came out, and I feel like more people would be playing it with that. I, 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 that is probably the hardest part for me to get into a game when there's no voice talking. It's hard for you to get into a story. So that really takes it away from me uh, in getting into the story and playing the game. The second thing I would say is the combat. The combat in this game feels slow it feels boring i don't know why it just feels much more boring and slow than banner saga was if it just because of the turn bases and everything it just feels like the fight is slower than it has to be um there's no like gratifying like big hits um i don't know i just feel like even with the card system and everything the game just the combat is not nearly as fun as it needs to be and I think that's what's going to take away from this game next to the not having voice acting. I feel people are going to play the combat. They're going to be very bored with it because it's so slow, slow paced that that's what's going to make them say, ah, this game's not for me. The third and final thing that I don't know if it's a con or whatnot, but I feel like the game is a little bit overpriced. It's $24.99. You get about 15 to 30 hours of play, depending on how you play it and whatnot. Um, but, you know, for 20 hours, 25 hours of playtime, I feel like it's worth it. Uh, but, yeah, it could probably be a little bit cheaper given the quality of some of the things about the game. So that's it for my cons. Other than that, I feel like the voice acting is a huge letdown. If they had somebody do some voice acting in the, in the conversations, it would be huge. And I feel like they could have done a little bit better job with the combat. So let's talk about the things that I really do love about the game. The number one is the story. 
Um, the story can be hard to follow at points. You really got to read through it. And I think that's what takes away from it is if you had the voice acting, you could be a little more engaged. But once you get into the game and you start watching the story unfold and watching some of the, uh, the scenes and you realize how pretty the game is and how engaging the story is. It's pretty good. You, you, you like the characters that you're following. They're all different. And it's a good story. And the music is phenomenal. I love the music in this game. Um, I played Bard's Tale 4 the other day, uh, and I made a couple videos on it, but I love the music in that game. I was singing the music, like, around my house. And so I feel like this game has that same level where the music is so entrancing that, like, you, you just you can't get it out of your head. So the music is really, really good. Uh, the story is really, really good. And I, I just feel like how the game progresses and the fact that it's a choice-based game where every decision you make changes the outcome, I feel like that's a really good thing to have in the story because each decision can change how someone reacts to you. Uh, it can change the whole story. And you notice when it's a it's a changing like decision, is this little ink well with a little feather pops up. It's like, hey, you know, this is a big deal. If you make this decision, it's gonna be different. So. I feel that adds to the replayability of it. I just don't know how many people are going to want to replay the game um, with it being kind of as slow as it is in some of the parts. So at the end of the day, the number one question is, should you buy this game? And my answer to you is yes, if it's on sale. I would not pay $24.99 for this game. Um, just my opinion. Some people may disagree. I think if you're really into the story of a game and you really like the music and the art of the game, this is a great game for you. If you're buying this game solely for the, the turn-based tactical combat, that is a bad decision because that's where it's lackluster. Um, and like I said, it goes on sale on Steam occasionally. It was on sale the other day. Uh, you can buy it through me. I don't have any kind of discount, but if you want to buy it full price I feel like you'll get your money's worth if you play it more than once right if you play through it once and you get bored with it You're not gonna get your money's worth But if you keep playing through it and you and you like the story and you want to see the different outcomes Or you're an achievement hunter and you want to get all the achievements Then I feel like buying the game for the retail price is worth it for you so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't get a lot of time to just play consistently, so I like to play games and then give you my reviews and opinions on things that maybe you missed or maybe you didn't even know existed, and maybe it's worth a buy for y'all. So this is Van from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Cheers and peace out.